Hey guys, it's David from Deal Machine here, and we've got an awesome story for you. We've got Chris Monroe from St. Louis. How are you doing, Chris? Doing great. Hello, David. How are you today? I'm really awesome. I think both of us are getting a lot of snow today. It's in January, and it's the first big snowfall here. What, five, six inches here? What do you yeah, have? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably at least that much here, and it's probably a good time to go driving for dollars. Who didn't shovel their snow? They're distressed. <laughs> That's an awesome tip. Absolutely. <laughs> So you actually you actually drive for dollars yourself, right? Well, I do. Uh, I have a business here in St. Louis, so sometimes we do deliveries and things, and so we see things. You know, it's like it just catches your eye, especially once you get into the real estate side. Certain things just catch your eye automatically. Like this doesn't look right. This looks out of place. You know, uh, everybody's trash can is out except for this one. Maybe the house is vacant. Maybe they have a situation going on, mm -hmm. and that's when I'll snap at that app in there and uh, see what's going on. Okay, so what do you do when you see one of those? You'll take a picture of it? So yeah, basically I just pull out the phone, uh, use the uh, Deal Machine app, take a picture of it, look it up, uh, try to see. Um, I like that it shows on the app, like when they bought it or you know how much they paid for it, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, a lot of information right at your fingertips. So it kind of helps to let me know if I even want to contact them. Because sometimes I look it up and say, a house just was sold January 1st and this is January 12th now. It's like, mm -hmm. well, they just bought it. So that's why it looks like that. They didn't get a chance to get in it yet. But if I look on there and say they've had this house from 2005 and it looks distressed or something looks out of whack, I might want to contact them and see what's really going on. So I would just take a picture and, uh, you know, send them a, send them the mail or either do an enhanced search and, uh, you know, contact them that way. That's awesome. And you've actually done some deals that way, right? Yeah, we've actually, uh, I have uh, two other deal finders on my app with me and they find deals. Uh, one of them found a deal actually, actually uh, last week. So I'm contacting that person now. And uh, we had a couple under contract that didn't make it through for whatever reason. And I was successful with getting a few to go through. Um, one of them that I did get was, uh, I was riding through University City. I don't know if you're familiar with that area over in, you know, a suburb, you know, yeah, municipality of St. Louis County. Uh, riding through there and you know looking at houses I was actually driving for dollars actively at that time and you know I picked up about maybe 10 houses in the area snapped the picture sent the mail one of them called back about a week later and was like yeah we want to sell this house so uh, you know because I looked at the house and it looked like it was nothing wrong with it, it just looked vacant and I'm like why is this house vacant and it looks like in great condition mm -hmm. but it had like a little sticker on the window like saying something I guess grass tall or something I don't know some type of ordinance or something happened where the city contacted them. So I said, yeah. they seem like they may be a motivated seller. So they were on my list of people I found that day. I sent them the postcard. They uh, called back. Uh, I spoke to her. She was like, yeah, we just finished uh, getting some insurance stuff done with some pipes and things, some pipes burst, and they want to sell it. So I did some research, did my due diligence on it, met them over there, made an offer, got it under contract for $30,000. Um, I sent it out to try to get a, you know, a cash buyer to buy it for about 40, but they ended up making an offer at 36. But what I'm going to do is say, sell it. I'll take that six grand. So I got a $6,000 assignment fee on my contract. Close it up. No problem. I so love it. Two or three weeks. So it was easy money for, yeah. you know, for the $1 investment. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it. How many properties at that point had you added into the deal machine app before that came through? Uh, maybe about 60 or 70, you know, cause, uh, like I yeah. said, I have, it's me and two other people that find deals and sometimes they find things and they don't really know what to look for. So they don't know, you know, and I know, to, you know, to contact certain people cause it just, you know, looks right. You know, it fits the parameters that, uh, yeah, this person probably wants to sell. That's awesome. So 70 is actually really good because usually we see a deal come in after somebody has got, you know, about 200 properties in the app and they've sent mail three times. So it's really great to hear that you got a deal even before that. In our experience, sometimes it does take it does take at least 200, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I was really surprised that they called back so quick. So that just kind of showed me like, wow, I thought I just sent that out a couple days ago and they're calling already? Because I have a dedicated number just for the deal machine app. So anything comes in on that phone line, I know it came from the mailers or it came from through deal machine. So okay. I can track my marketing so I can know what's going on. And uh, when they called back and said, yeah, we want to sell it. I said, oh, wow, that's that nice house. Definitely want to get that one. So that's you know, awesome. Yeah, so it yeah. worked out really good. So, okay, rewind a little bit. You said you've got two deal finders as well. Yeah, so I have two deal finders on there. So I was able to add some other people to say they want to get into the game and they're, they're seeing houses. So I sent them the link 
you know, through the Deal Machine, Machine app so they can sign up with their email address and uh, they're on my team. And I think we can have up to three deal finders on there, I think, with the program I'm on now. Yeah, on the and, basic uh, plan, it has up to three. Yeah, so I have two. I had three, but that guy disappeared, so I just took him off. So he's not on there anymore. All and, right. uh, so yeah, the other two, they've been finding deals actively. And uh, you know, if there's something good, I'll either shoot him a, a, a piece of mail, or I'll go ahead and skip trace them and try to uh, give them a phone call. Because I'm all about getting them on the phone so I can get an answer right now. It's quicker, you know what I mean? I love that. Absolutely. A lot of people have been doing cold calling and they're getting great results because the average person won't pick up the phone and do that. You know, it can be scary. It takes some extra time and effort. So it's awesome. Yeah, most definitely. That way. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I also like the fact that on Deal Machine, you can pull up, uh, if you pull it up on a desktop, you can get that spreadsheet. That makes a big difference when I can actually take it off of there, all the houses I found or they found put them on and put them into other marketing streams as well so that I can keep everything organized. And I have a list that I compiled or my team has compiled that nobody can just go buy. It's my own list that was found from driving for dollars. So it's that much more powerful. Absolutely. Man, that's awesome. You really know the ins and outs of Deal Machine. Well, yeah, because I use it. You know, when you get in the game and you spend money, anything you spend money on, you kind of get to know it real quick. You make a few mistakes here and there, but, you know, you live and you learn. If you don't take your lumps and get up and fight for another day, you know, what do you plan to do? Just, you know, so I just say fight and fight and keep on going. Yep, I totally agree. That's great. What, um, what else would be interesting to talk about with this deal? I mean, you made a $6,000 assignment fee. That's awesome. You had about 70 properties in there and you sent mail to all of them how many times would you say like how much money did you spend on the deal machine app uh so we got the let's see 50 dollars per month or 49 dollars per month plus the mail um i actually changed my settings to send like two mailers on some of those okay. like some of them i just sent one and stopped it because i don't you know they were accidental sins or things like that so we didn't really send three postcards to all of them um we sent probably maybe half of that, I would say. Okay. Like, a lot of them, I just straight called them because I'm like, yeah, this looks like something I need to jump on quickly. I need to get them on the phone or have one of the cold callers I have to give them a call and you know, gather their information and see if it's something going on there. Yes. So, um, that, that was the best way. Awesome. I mean, we can even go back and check. Would you be okay with that so we can calculate the ROI you had from the Deal Machine app? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it's probably a lot more in there now. It's probably... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we probably got over 300 or something in there now. So Wow, that's awesome. Any yeah. other deals or just the one so far? Well, so that's the one that made it to the finish line. We did come across others that I got under contract and they didn't make it to the finish line for other reasons, such as maybe title issues or maybe the price I put under contract for was too high or, you know, the person mm -hmm. wouldn't budge on price for our repair, as far as the repairs and things like that. You know, just the typical stuff that happens. It's just the lead generation. It gets you the leads, but you still have to, you know, follow up and finish the work to make the deal happen. Great deals are made and I like to make good deals. <laughs> I like that because it makes you realize, you know, you've got to put in the work and, and not just sit back and wait for it. Tell me yeah. about that one deal. You said it was a really nice house, right? Mm -hmm. What made you What made you say, this is a really good deal to put in Deal Machine? Well, just looking at the outside of it, you know, the air conditioner was like two years old. I mean, if somebody spent that kind of money, you know, they did something, you know what I mean? Um, the roof looked good. Uh, everything about the house looked pretty good from the outside. So when I got on the inside, it was confirmed. Everything looked pretty good in there as well. The only problem they had is uh, like last year in the winter time, something happened and the pipes burst. So okay. they had to redo all these pipes and they had some flooding damage, I guess, or something. So a lot of stuff got redone. So the house is pretty new as far as updating. The only downfall about the whole house is it didn't have a basement. So it was on a concrete slab. So that could be a downfall for some people. But other than that, a three bedroom, one bath for that kind of money, you know, I wanted to buy it and keep it for myself, you know, and rent it out or, you know, do a lease option or something with it. But yeah, you know, that was a different position. Especially in University City. Yeah, it would have been an easy, you know, find. I, you know, it would have been easy to get somebody in there. Mm -hmm. so and but what, what, what made you actually send the mail in the first place? Um, it was that. just what I was doing at that time. I, you know, I, I just did a bunch of houses. You know, I said, I'm going to go drive for dollars for like two hours. And okay. I did, it was just a mission for that day. So that two hours yeah. worth of work and effort brought me in that lead that resulted so there, in a deal. There was no there was no tall grass or any indi indicator? 
Uh, just that yeah, sticker. It was like one of those little green stickers. I don't know. It's from the city or something. Saying there it is. Yeah. Okay. Green sticker from the city saying that something was wrong. Right. Yeah. So okay. it, that's basically all it was. You know. And I look for that when I'm out awesome driving for tip. dollars. I'm looking for stickers on the wall or you know on the windows or mail overflowing in the thing. I know not to send mail there. That's the other good thing with Deal Machine. When you yeah. do that uh, enhanced search, you can send it to those other addresses versus yeah. that one because I don't want to send it to pile up with the rest of them. I want to go ahead and send it to where nobody else has sent it and uh, try to contact them. Right. So what you're talking about is you press enhanced search. It gives you a list of other addresses where this owner has registered for utilities at some point. So if they've moved or something else, you know, you've got a list of addresses there where you can reach them. You know, other properties that they've owned or registered utilities at, like it lived in an apartment. So you can get a hold of them that way. Exactly. And then you find out they're an out of town owner. They're even more motivated. They're not even here, even better. Cause I do a lot of virtual wholesaling. A lot of people, uh, you know, they try to do it, but I came in the game. I just started as a matter of fact, in August, I only been doing this a few months. Mm -hmm. So I, I closed my first deal August 31st and I've closed eight deals already wholesaling. So, and then I got another one closing next Friday for another 10 K. So, you know, I hit the ground kind of running. A lot of people didn't do it that quick because I implemented systems such as this deal machine and different phone call systems and things like that to actually build a business versus just some hustle. You know what I mean? Because I've been hustling all my life. I'm trying to get rich though. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. Such a great story. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you'd share for a beginner who say like picking it up for the first time and they kind of need some direction? Yeah, so what I would say is it's the consistency thing. Go out on a regular basis and just go down streets you haven't been down before. Uh, I would suggest going into, um, you know, if you can find out what the hottest zip codes are in your area, kind of focus in that area where cash deals are being uh, purchased. If you can find out that information, and there's a way to do that, you can just look it up on YouTube or something, how mm -hmm. to find the hottest zip codes if somebody's want to look it up. I don't want to go into it too deep, but you can yeah. find that information out, do that, find out what the hottest zip codes are, and then go drive for dollars in that area and you'll find out that, uh, you know, you'll come across something that's easier to get rid of because it's actively uh, being bought up by investors and that's where you want to focus your energy. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to dive into the virtual wholesaling because I remember when I was starting out, the most difficult part was figuring out how much am I supposed to offer for this thing? And I was going into the homes and seeing what they were like inside before I'd make an offer. Well, how the heck, you know, that's hard enough when you can see the house. Like, how the heck do you do that from a virtual location? Well, that's actually pretty easy once you learn the techniques. Virtual wholesaling is all about how you speak to the seller. You must ask the right questions and ask them in a way that they can tell you because they'll tell you everything that you want to know. For example, you can ask the seller, um, so if you were to repair you know, whatever you say that needs repairing, how much do you think it would cost to bring this house up to tip top shape? And they'll say some number. Oh, I think 7,000. You make your offer based on that amount. You see, you hold them accountable. They told you 7,000. And that's from their, you know, their estimation. And then when you go see it, or if you go see it, because I lock up a lot of houses without going to see them. So say you lock it up going by the number that they told you. $7,000 was the repair amount, they think. And uh, you go and you find out it's really 12,000. That's a big jump. That's something you can go back and renegotiate with the seller later mm -hmm. to say, hey, yeah, we thought, you know, originally, like you said, $7,000 was the repair amount. But yeah, you got this, 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 and this. And you have something you can go to bat with to renegotiate if you have to with the seller later. Or you can just, you know, go ahead and do it off of their numbers because sometimes they may overestimate what it would cost. So if you hold them accountable, if you ask them the right questions from the beginning, uh, virtual wholesaling is actually easier than you think it is. Man, that's great. I, I actually learned about renegotiation and that made my process way smoother. I haven't done anything virtual yet, but it kind of gives you the confidence knowing you've got an inspection period. And if you figure out nobody's going to buy it at the price you've listed it at or the repairs are going to take more, you've got the ability to go back and say, hey, I really want to do this deal. Yeah, but I can't do it at this price because nobody I can't get the work done cheap enough. Exactly. And I actually got a deal like that where I tried to get a different deal. I tried to give the house back to the seller and she was like, oh, no, because we had it under contract for 60000 And, uh, you know, and I'm like, this house needs everything. You know, it's, it's livable, but it needed updated on every level. It hasn't been updated since the late 70s or something. Mm -hmm. So it needed carpet, paint, everything, kitchen, you know, and even if, you know, just to bring it to a good standard, it didn't have to be perfect. 
So I went back and told her, hey, yeah, we need to, uh, I need to go ahead and just give you this house back because uh, we can't get the repairs done low enough. And I've had several contractors look at it and for the repairs it's gonna take, it's gonna take a lot to bring it back up to standard. And the yes. seller knows she didn't update anything. She, you know, she had this house for 20 years and didn't do anything to it but collect rent. So she made plenty of money on it and she was just trying to be kind of greedy. It was paid off free and clear. So come to find out, she was like, well, what do you need to be at to, you know, to make it work? I said, we need to be at like around 40,000 to make this work. She mm -hmm. said, oh, well, can you split the difference and do 50? I'm like, no, nah, that'll be too high. I don't want to, you know, it'll be too risky for us at that amount. Well, can you do 45? I said, hmm, let's see what we can do. So I went on and took it at 45. I put it back out at 52 and made seven grand on a deal I was getting ready to give back. So it worked out perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Really, really powerful story when, when you're thinking about somebody who's truly motivated, even if you've got to pay them less to do the deal, they're most likely going to accept the counter, the offer to do it because they want to get it off their hands, right? They're motivated. Yeah, exactly. A motivated seller, you know, it's different when you're dealing with motivated people versus just somebody trying to sell. You'll know if they're motivated because they'll come down off their price. And even if you lock it up for too much, which, you know, we can make that mistake a little bit, but don't go into the game trying to lock up stuff for too much and come back and renegotiate. That's bad yeah. business. But if you truly, you know, thought it needed this much or whatever from what they said or what you saw or what, you know, your judgment was on putting the house under contract, I don't see any problem with going back and renegotiating. I'll do it in a heartbeat now. I mean, that just built the confidence to say, hey, yeah, you just, if you go in there and you see that, hey, it needs, this bathroom doesn't even have a bathtub. It needs, it has an old shower in it. Yes. You know, hey, we got to spend money to fix that. You know, you didn't do it. You know, you didn't do anything to it. Over 20 years of having it. So drop that price. And it was nice. Yeah. <laughs> got a question for you, actually, on the topic of motivation. What I learned was sales isn't about convincing somebody to sell their house, but it's kind of disqualifying them and not going on an appointment if they're not super motivated, right? Um, I had a lot of people call me and say, hey, I got your postcard and uh, I'm not giving my house away. And I used to go meet those people, not to convince them, but I realized like more often than not, those ended up being a waste of time. Like, how do you handle those people? Like what kind of, do you go well, through like a qualification process before you'd ever meet them? Most definitely, I asked them over 50 questions probably oh, more 50 questions at least 50 questions see it's all about asking good questions when you ask good questions it eliminates all the junk i.e uh you would ask uh, what would you do if you're not able to sell this house mm -hmm. see they'll answer something that'll give them bring them a little closer to you so have you ever thought about listening with the real estate agent oh no i don't want to do an agent it's going to be three percent and six percent and they're going to take all day i want to go against all those objections before I even try to see the house, before I even make an offer, anything. So I get all of that stuff out of the way, way before mm -hmm. I even try to make an offer on it. Even my offer is a question. So everything I do is a question. So would you consider 30,000 for this house? It's just a question. They can say mm -hmm. yes, no, well, I don't know, that seems low or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just a question. It's not that I, I'm offering 30,000 and that's my offer and you get to take it or leave it. You don't want to be in that position. Yeah. If I come in as a question asker, they can tell me the feedback and then I can kind of judge from there and see what we can do to make the deal happen for them and what we can do to make the deal work for us. So that's mm -hmm. how I handle that. Well, if you have somebody that ends up not being qualified at that time, what do you do with them? Do you, do you follow up like a certain amount of time later or like how do you, how do you handle those? Yeah, so I can follow up with them or, um, you know, see where do they need to be? What what do you want for your house? What do you really need to be at? How much do you owe on it? That's another good question. I mean, you got to ask that of everybody. Straight mm -hmm. to the point. How much do you owe on it? Not, oh, well, I'm scared. I don't know if I want to ask you this. Do you mind if I ask how much you owe? That's too scary. You don't want to go in there like that. You want to go in. So how much do you owe on this house? Boom. And they just... They're going to be shocked. Like, oh, wow, you're just brave. You just asked me straight up. And I'm here to conduct business. I'm not playing games. When I right. got them on the phone, I want to know what's going on with the house so I can try to solve their problem. Not about just making money for me. I want to help them in any way I can. If I'm not helping them, I'm not really even helping myself at that point. All right. I got some questions about some stuff, your hat and also your sign that you got in the background. Oh, all right. ChrisMonroeSTL.com, that's the website. I used to do a radio show, so um, that's why it's kind of set up like that, but I don't do it anymore. I do different podcasts and things from time to time and help people out um, with different business aspects. Um, and my hat says Conscious Veteran. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it now. Yeah, yeah. you can get that on my website, ChrisMonroeSTL.com or iShopWoke.com. So that's, you know, I just sell a lot of products. Like I told you before, I sell a lot of stuff. I have over 10,000 items for sale. 
private oh. label products um like i say furniture collectibles antiques i have a lot of stuff so when it was like converting it over into real estate i already know how to sell so i was listening to uncle g grant cardone he said sometimes you can be in the wrong vehicle and that's true i was probably in the wrong vehicle so now i'm in something where i can make some real money and so i'm in that real estate game now nah, they didn't messed up they should have never let me learn this real estate's been doing pretty well for you oh yeah uh yeah since august 31st i think uh over 50k so that's not bad you know that's just great to start out the game. yeah holy cow i can't that's wait so to see what you do in your first full year yeah so right now i'm in a process of scaling up so like i told you i have one cold call or i have two cold callers now i just hired a second one and um I, she's in training now so if i can get her trained up in the next couple of weeks to you know start taking down this information and uh, eventually I want them to start taking down deals because I just have them gathering the front information. Like I say, ask those questions. I have a long script here of questions they ask. So oh. basically can go in and ask all these questions, get all the information, mm -hmm. and then I call them back to follow up to make an offer or go see it or go through the rest of the process to where I can actually create a good system to flow a lot of the deals through where I can get you know more deals in. Is there a place on your website where that's available with all the questions? Uh, yeah, if anybody want to connect with me, I can uh, I can get them that information. I'm really active on Instagram at Chris Monroe STL or any social media. As a matter of fact, all the same across all of them at Chris Monroe STL. Easy to find, easy to uh, get in contact with. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story. What else would you want to leave us with before we wrap this up? Uh, the biggest thing is, like I say, consistency. Stay on it. Don't give up. If you can't figure something out, if a person's starting out and they're like, oh, I don't understand, go look for help. Uh, get into these Facebook groups and forums. They, they answer questions all the time. Um, they got, uh, who else is on there? They got uh, YouTube University. That's where I learned a lot of this stuff. I learned a lot just by going on the internet and learning it and implementing. Not just learning it and say, oh, I soaked it in learn it and do it and if i mess up i mess up like i said i put a lot of houses on the contract that didn't make it to the finish line and it's just part of the game don't don't make it seem like that's the end of the world there's more houses there's more deals keep pushing and if you go get the uh deal machine app i say put in that keyword woke w-o-k-e and let them know where you found it deal machine and that's, it works out i like it so i think you'll get some extra credits too when you sign up with one of those promo codes so oh, they, really? So that's how that works? Okay. Yep. So they can use some of that extra credit to send direct mail and do enhanced searches too during their free trial. So they just go in and put in that promo code WOKE, W-O-K-E, and they'll get free credits. I like that. Yep. So, yeah. I think it's 20 bucks. Oh, all right. Cool. Cool. Because I sent a lot of people in through the other way and I, I probably 20, 25 people through the friends and family way before I knew about that part, but it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what, what you guys uh, are listening to, friends and family, is uh, if you go in the Deal Machine app, there's that button that says get free leads, right? That's what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so when you do that, then you both get some, uh, some credits as well. Uh, Chris and I, he just wanted to have a, a personalized one. So if you guys are listening and you have the Deal Machine app, you can also do that and share it with that um, friends and family type promo code that Chris was talking about. Yeah, we love some free credits. Everybody wants something for free, right? That's the yeah, that's right. And we appreciate you sharing it. So we just want to give you guys a little reward for doing that. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I actually like the app. I've been using it since, like I say, August. So I got on pretty early. I don't know. Has it been out that long? Or? It's been out for a full year. So you've jumped on probably, you know, halfway through our whole existence. Oh, okay. So, yep. Yeah. I've been helping push it then. I told everybody about it. I said, it's good, especially when you're in a market that feels like it's oversaturated. There's too many people out. Go out here and find the deals that they're not finding. That's what mm -hmm. I say. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. And I think there's going to be a lot of good information that you were able to provide in this that somebody who's just starting out is going to take away and hopefully put into action in their market. Most definitely. So I think it's a good thing. And uh, good luck to everyone. And good luck to you too, pushing this app out and uh, helping people out. You're helping people. So that's why you're being rewarded. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.